Hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make some tiger bread. Uh, this is a, a Dutch tiger bread so and I'm going to make it in the form of rolls but basically it's a bread dough which is then covered with a, a yeasted rice uh, slurry basically and then as they bake that slurry uh, breaks apart and forms a nice crust in the form of some sort of spots and it's supposed to resemble a tiger but it's also known as crunch bread and giraffe bread and probably the the uh, spots or the uh, the cracking appears more like leopard spots than uh, the sort of stripes of a tiger but in Holland it's known as tiger bread so that's what I'm going to make it does take a while because I'm going to proof the dough once then a second time and then I will shape it and proof it for a third time before I bake it so it's going to take about four hours in all but it isn't a difficult recipe if you just follow the instructions I'm going to use my stand mixer you can do it by hand but uh, it then is quite a lot of effort to do the, the, the kneading for sort of 10 to 15 minutes so I'll go on to the ingredients and for the bread dough, I have 500 grams, which is three and one thirds cups, based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup of bread flour. I have seven grams, one packet of instant yeast. I have 42 grams, which is three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Eight grams, one and a third teaspoons of salt and I'm using Himalayan salt simply because that's what I had out. One medium egg which would be large in the USA. 20 grams which is one and a half tablespoons of sugar and I also have 240 milliliters of lukewarm water. I've got this at 42 degrees uh, centigrade which is 108 degrees Fahrenheit. And then uh, for the rice flour slurry to go on the top I have 105 grams which is two-thirds of a cup of rice flour. I have 20 grams one and a half tablespoons of sugar six grams which is slightly less than um, a packet of yeast maybe just about uh, two teaspoons or one and three quarter teaspoons that would be fine. I have 30 millilitres, two tablespoons of oil and I'm using sesame oil because some of the recipes that I looked at uh, did mention that in Holland they use sesame oil but you can use any oil you want basically. And then I also have 105 millilitres, half a cup minus one tablespoon of water. And um, I'm not going to warm that water up, that would just be cold water or, or sort of the, as it comes out of the tap basically. So I don't need all those ingredients, we need to go on to make the dough. So uh, to make the dough I'm going to put the flour into the bowl of my stand mixer. And then I'm going to add the sugar in as well and the salt and the yeast and then I'm going to add the butter as well and I'm going to use my whisk uh, to start off with and I'm just going to whisk this on a low speed until the butter breaks down into the flour and everything is, is sort of uh, distributed evenly. And that's good like that. Um, that's just to get the 
butter broken in really. So then I'm going to put my egg into my lukewarm water. And I'm just going to whisk that around to break it up. Like that. And I'm then going to put that into the flour, but I'm going to uh, pour it in a little at a time and uh, I need to change to my dough hook for this. And then I'm going to knead it um, for 10 minutes until uh, the dough has come together and it's come away from the sides of the bowl and I have a nice smooth and elastic dough. So that's all my egg and water in the dough and I'm going to just keep kneading that until it comes together, as I said, into a smooth and elastic dough. So I've kneaded that for 10 minutes and I'm going to take it out of the bowl And with that out of the bowl, I'm going to actually divide it into two pieces. As I said, I'm going to make rolls with these, but it's going to be easier working with it in two pieces. It will proof so that I can see it better like that. So um, I want them to be roughly the same size. So that's good. I'm just going to flatten that out into a sort of, I suppose, a sort of trapezoid, I suppose, wider at this end than at the top end. And then I'm going to fold it down like that, pushing back on it like that. And then I'm going to just fold it over on itself and form it into a ball. And I'm trying to get some tautness into it like that. And I'm going to put that onto a baking tray, which I have uh, put a piece of greased plastic wrap on. Do the same with the other one. And then with both of them on the greased plastic wrap, I'm going to cover them with another piece of plastic wrap. And I'm going to put those into a warm place to proof for about an hour or until they've doubled in size and once they've doubled in size um, I will come back and we will uh, do the same again uh, roll them out into a sausage shape but this time we will actually uh, leave them to proof in that shape for another hour but I'll come back in an hour and we'll do that it's been an hour now um, or just under an hour actually and as you can see uh, my dough balls have uh, more than doubled in size. So I'm going to uh, knock the air out of them um, and reform them.
So again, a, a sort of a rough triangle or trapezoid shape. And I'm going to roll it up. And as I roll, I'm going to push back on it. This is getting tension into the dough, basically. And then I'm going to seal that like that. And I'm going to place that on the baking tray. And do the same with the second ball and place that on the baking tray. And I'm going to cover those and leave them to rest again until they've doubled in size once more. And as the dough rests, I'm going to make the rice flour slurry to go on the top. So I'm going to put my rice flour into a bowl with the sugar and the yeast. And then I'm going to pour my oil in as well. And then I'm going to put the water in and um, I'll mix it together until there are no lumps of any sort and the rice flour is fully incorporated just like that and then I'm going to simply cover that and leave it to sit there uh, for an hour while our dough rises and, and once the hour is up I'll come back, we'll knock the air out, shape the, uh, divide the dough and shape it into our rolls and then I'll leave them to rest for 10 minutes before I put the slurry on then they need to rest uh, until uh, they've risen up for, for 45 minutes to an hour and at that stage I'll have my oven preheated ready to bake them as well and I'll preheat the oven at 180 celsius that's 160 celsius with a fan at 350 fahrenheit but I'll be back uh, to shape them uh, once this dough has doubled. I let the uh, dough rise again for an hour while I made the slurry and uh, that has also risen as it's been sitting there so this is what they look like now. Now I should say that if you wanted to make these as a loaf uh, you could do this on two baking trays, uh, roll them out again as I as I showed you before um, and then put the slurry on but um, they will bake up nicely just as two loaves but I'm going to do them as rolls. So I'm going to take the first one and I'm going to knock the air out of it like that fold it up and then I'm going to divide that into three pieces of hopefully equal uh, size
and then I'll do the same with the second piece of dough. So there are my six pieces and I'm simply going to just fold those roughly like that and I'm going to leave them for about 10 minutes to rest. That will allow the gluten to slacken off a little bit. And then in 10 minutes I will come back and we will shape them for the final time and put the slurry on, then we have to proof them again. So it's been 10 minutes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just press the air out again and then I'm going to fold each of the balls over on themselves like this and then I'm going to turn it over and get some tension in it like that and then I'm going to seal the bottom and I'm going to put that on a baking tray and I'm going to leave a good gap between each one and then with all six formed into a ball as you can see my uh, rice flour mixture has aerated quite nicely simply going to stir that back like that and then I'm going to brush that over the top And I want it quite thick and brush it all over. So I've covered the tops of each of them with that um, rice flour mixture and I'm going to leave those for an hour and as the hour comes to an end I'll preheat my oven as I mentioned to 180 celsius that's 160 celsius with a fan 350 fahrenheit and I'll put a pan of water in the oven so that it heat on the bottom of the oven so that it will heat up and create steam but I'll come back and show you these just before I put them in the oven um, once they have risen up and as they rise up um, the, the slurry on the top should begin to fracture a little bit and then it will uh, crack up once it's being baked. So I'll be back in an hour to show you what they look like just before they go in the oven. Well it's been an hour and my oven is now preheated. So as you can see, I hope, the top of the rolls um, with the slurry on has started to crack a little bit where the, the slurry is rising and as they bake they will uh, crack more because the dough underneath is going to rise up and push the slurry apart basically. So I'm going to put them into the oven and I'm going to bake them for between 25 and 35 minutes until they've got a nice golden brown colour on top and I can touch the internal temperature uh, to make sure that it, uh, they're cooked all the way through. Then I'll take them out of the oven and place them on a wire rack to cool and when they've cooled I'll come back and show you the results. I baked my uh, Dutch Tiger Rolls for uh, 32 minutes actually. Um, I waited until they browned very nicely on the top. They did crack as I said they would do. Very very soft. I tested the internal temperature and it was at 98 degrees Celsius, which is 
um, over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so I knew that they'd be cooked all the way through. I took them out and they've been cooling down. They're still actually warm, but I've cut one in half as well. So this is what they look like when they're baked. So you can see um, they're called tiger bread, but they're spotted rather more like leopards or giraffes than tigers. And this is what the inside looks like. And as you can see, it's very, very soft. So I'll have a taste of this without any butter on, basically. Mm. It's a very nice roll. Lovely soft texture. Sorry, I'm spitting. A lovely soft texture inside and uh, with the crunch on the top but that uh, that is firm but it the, but you can still press them and squeeze them and they'll still be soft um, so very very good so I hope you've enjoyed this video because that's going to be it for today and if you have please give me a thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel in the top right hand corner of the screen there will be an I that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe and I'll put a link below the video as well and I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future so until then happy baking